Hi Stitchy friends. I'm Angie. I'm the Tiny House Stitcher. Uh, this is floss tube number 10 I believe and it's good to be back. I've missed you. I've been gone about a month. Uh, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Uh, I hope you'll stick around and um, I hope you like what you see. Uh, if you're returning, welcome back. It's so so good to see you. I've missed you all. Um, I have some sad news to share. Those of you who have been following me for a while know that my sister uh, has been struggling with asthma and not getting any help through her through Kaiser. Uh, my sister is 43 years old and is a single mother of four children. And she passed away on July 11th from cardiac arrest brought on by yet another asthma attack. Sorry. You have been You have lifted me up and sent so many wonderful prayers and good thoughts and been so kind to me and my family during this time. And I have no words to thank you. I started this channel 10 videos ago back in March and life was normal and you know I wanted this to be a safe and happy place and today it's not a happy place and I apologize for that but I promise you we will get back to that I'm gonna try to get through this video without too many tears I will talk about what happened at the end of the video so if you're not interested I completely get it feel free to skip over that but I'll let you know at the end when um, when I'm gonna start going over that uh, I do want to thank I almost don't want to name anyone because there have been hundreds and hundreds of you who have reached out and I'm just I could spend this whole video talking to you about the gratitude and gratitude is not even a strong enough word but you know I think you know um, this community <laughs> this community is just if everyone was like this community it would be heaven on earth so I want to thank some of you um, just the ones that are in my face because I can't remember anything right now. My brain is mush. Judy, thank you so much. Tanya and family, thank you. I appreciate it. This is a handmade card by Michelle Cunningham. Michelle, I love the purple. You know it. <laughs> thank you. It's beautiful. And Jenny and Nancy, the bougie, bougie sti stitchers, I always struggle with that. Um, these ladies have become very important to me. I watched their video the other night and it brought me comfort to see two sisters. Um, yeah, talking about gratitude and hug each other for me, will you guys? Uh, love you both. Thank you so much. Um, and of course, my other dear friends, um, Mel, Stitch with Mel, has just been an angel. And Michelle Hudson has been my rock. She is going through her own stuff and never ceases to be there when I text or when I just need to vent. So all of you lovely, lovely ladies and so, so many more of you, I just want to say thank you. I don't have the words. 
if I could reach out and hug every single one of you, I would do it in a heartbeat. I just, I'm so grateful and I feel the love and I just wanted to thank you for that. So enough of that. <laughs> Moving on. The last time we talked, I had mentioned that, um, that I was going to be doing some of my own finishes because I re went to go pull out my patriotic decorations that, you know, that I had finished and there was nothing. So, um, I tend to give away my stitches and I need to stop doing that as I mentioned in my last video. So here are a couple that I've done for myself. The first one is uncle Sam by autumn lane stitchery. And I did him in a little pillow. He's tall and I just stuffed him with, um, Fiberfill. Sorry for the ums. Sorry. And I put a little 2022 charm on the back so I would remember when he was done. I love him. Autumn Lane, one of my favorites. And then the other one, it, I call him Funky Abe because he looks funky to me. But he is a Lincoln by Miss Prim on Etsy. And I did make a couple of changes. I think his lapels were like they weren't like two red ones and two blue ones. They were kind of funky. So I just switched that up a little bit and I changed the wording. It said, Oh, honestly, Abe. And I just took some of that off and left it honest, Abe. And so I put a hard bottom on him. He's a stand up. I have some uh, almond crushed walnut shells at the bottom to give him some weight. And then the rest is just fiber fill. So he's a little stand up. And he has the 2022 on the back too. And then I went around the edges with just some little X's. He didn't really need a whole lot, I didn't feel like. So that's a, turned out great. So those are my finishes, oh, my FFOs. I do have two more finishes. Um, one is a start and a finish since the last time we spoke. I started this shortly after the last time, the last video. And this is Sunflower by Rovaras. This is one of the charts I got at StitchCon. And I loved seeing them in person. They were so pretty. And I love the long pillow with the little, uh, you know, they made it longer over here even. So it's long and skinny, which I like. So here is my sunflower. So pretty. And I think I used all the called for on this one. Yep, I'm pretty sure. Doesn't happen very often these days, so that's sunflower. Uh, that was stitched, by the way, on 40 count no name fabric but from Jody from Steel City Stitcher. She doesn't name her fabrics, so I don't have a name for you, sorry, but it's a beautiful one. The other one I finished was the piece that I did for StitchCon. This is by Liz Matthews and it's called Friendship Basket. And you just um, fill in, you fill in part of the frame and the basket and then when you go to a retreat or wherever you might be going, you ask your friends to fill in some flowers, which I did, and I just love it. And then I used, I took this book here, the Ultimate Sampler Motif Source Book by Brenda Keys, and I used the fonts that are in here to put in the Stitch Con Friends at the top. So I love that. And I have another StitchCon piece that I'm going to show you shortly, and I will be finishing these in a complimentary way. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them yet, but something complimentary. Okay, so those are my two finishes. Uh, I had three starts. One of them was the sunflower that I just showed you that I started uh, right after my last floss tube. Um, that was kind of a comforting stitch too because I was stitching on that a lot when I got back to stitching after all of this happened and my sister had a garden that she loved very much and she had um, big sunflowers so that was kind of my comfort stitching for her. 
The next one is a sal that started on July 1st. And this was the pattern that we got at StitchCon that was made for this year's StitchCon. And so Stitchy Linda started, uh, I think her and some other folks, I'm not sure who else, started this sal. Um, and again, it started on July 1st, so I started that. I've gotten about halfway through it, I guess. Here's what I have so far. And I didn't pull out my little card. Let me see if I can find it. If everything doesn't fall. No, nope, I don't know what this fabric is. I'm sorry. I know it's 40 count. Um, and I think I used the called for for this. I'm pretty sure. If I changed anything, I just used the colors that were called for. I just used a different color. So I've, I've been using all of the called for. So that's that. And I lost the pattern. Here's the pattern. So I just have the second half down here to do. And those will be fun. Those little motifs. Those little motifs are always fun. So I'm liking this one, this is fun. And I have it in a bag that I bought at StitchCon with my little project tag from, oh, this might have it, it's 40 Count Cafe Olay. This is from Jody with Trixie Tricycle. Yeah, that's pretty cool, I love, I love that. So, love that bag too, really pretty. I might have to try, try making some like that. Okay. My next start, I started on July 20th. Uh, and I'm using different colors. This is called the Remember Me Pin Keep by Scattered Seed Samplings. So this has been a comfort stitch too. I have, I'm gonna show you this again. I might've showed it before, but these are little cards that I have done, uh, that I print out and I keep in all my project bags just so that I know exactly what I've stitched on when I started, all that good stuff. So here's my color conversion in case you need it or want it for any reason. So this one is stitched on 40 count seraphim in the color Jack Frost. And I have changed the colors. Here's, here's where I'm at. My sister was a purple girl too, and so was my dad. So I'm changing these big blue flowers to purples. So I'm using, for the purple I'm using, elegant eggplant, um, I'm using a silk for that. Yeah, so I'm excited about that one. That one's been so fun to stitch. Really a lot of fun. So that's Remember Me by Scattered Seed Samplings. And those are my new starts. Okay. Whips. Here we go. The first one is, uh, the, on my last floss tube, I mentioned that I was gonna be putting this one away, but I couldn't. I just love stitching this. So this is Let Freedom Ring by Leela Studio. I love this so much. I have done a color conversion for this, so if you're interested in it, just let me know. This is stitched on 40 Count Newcastle uh, in an unnamed color from the company We Will Die For You and the number of the color is 1086. And this is where I am. So all I have left to do on the large portion of the house is the fill-in. And it's beautiful. I am so pleased with this and I just love stitching on it. It's so pretty. So again, that's my color conversion. 
I left some of the DMCs if they weren't uh, used very often. I left them the same, but otherwise I I converted most everything into uh, overnight flosses. So if you have an interest in that, just email me and I'll shoot it over to you, no problem. Here are the threads. And that was my new year, new start. So I would be happy if I got it about halfway done this year because this is my first huge project. So I would be happy with that for sure. I'm running out of room. Okay. The next one is my daughter's mermaid. And I'm calling her Ursula because she's being a bit of a sea witch. So, um, yeah, this is my first pretty lady. And I started this at StitchCon on the 9th, actually in the hotel room, not in the actual StitchCon. Here are the flosses, all the called for flosses. I made a little wrinkling for it. Here are all of the beads. Here's all of the crinic. And here's how far I've gotten. <laughs> Not very. Okay, guys, why does this look so horrible? This is the first time I've used Krynik. I'm not going any farther until I figure out WTH. Why does that look so bad? So if you've got any Krynik pointers, uh, a friend of mine mentioned that there's, Jan Hicks has a video on using Krynik, so I'm gonna go look at that, but this just looks, no way that can be right. So, yeah. The actual name of the chart, by the way, is Pearl of the Orient Seas by Bella Filipina. And I'm stitching it on the called for uh, fabric. It's called Rigid by Under the Sea Fabrics. So that's where I'm at. The regular colors are going really well, but that Krynik, uh-uh, yuck. The next one is Christmas Delivery by Cottage Garden Samplings. I wanted to work, this is the Christmas that I worked on in Jolly July and I didn't work on it all that much at all. So I didn't get a whole lot of Christmas in in July, but stuff happens, right? So this is stitched on 40 count Newcastle linen in the color murky and here's where I am and I have I'm using the called for colors with a couple of exceptions Santa's coat and the bag I'm doing in a toile I don't can you see the sparkle so that's DMC a toile and I thought I'd mention it it's kind of I have it Kind of wrapped up but this is a toile this is how it comes it looks a little fuzzy it's got dog hair on it I'm sorry um, and I love working with this it it comes the threads are not as smooth as the regular DMC but no not even close to the horribleness of of metallic threads so you can still get the shine and not have to deal with those metallic threads which I love now that being said I went to Joann's the other day and this is what I found where the etoile used to be so I am on the hunt for etoile and I want to stock up I also used it in the snowflakes you can't really see the sparkle too much, but uh, I think it's beautiful as snow. It's beautiful in, um, I have that pattern. 
uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's the it's the witch shoe. It's the long witch shoe with the toe that comes up and around. Maybe if I can find it, I'll put it in here. But I want to do that shoe in the black etoile so it sparkles on like a purple fabric. So stuff like that, I just love it for. And it and the coverage is the same as DMC. So that's one strand of DMC, DMC of a 12 on 40 count and the coverage is the same and it's just beautiful. So Santa's sparkly coat and Santa's sparkly sack. So I'm excited about that one. That one, it, I was a little bit worried about if it was going to be too much, but I, if I don't do anything else in a 12, I think it's just going to be beautiful. And I will be using Whisper Thread for Santa's beard. If you've never seen this before, some people hate using this, and it's not easy by any means, but let me see if I can. You can see it's kind of furry. So you stitch with it, and then you take like a toothbrush or something like that, maybe like a mascara wand, and you just kind of fluff it up and that's what I want to use for his beard so his beard is not stitched yet and that's why I want to wait until the end so I don't mess it up that's the plan for that one the next one is patriotic ABC's sorry this is a Barbara Anna, and this was in the 2020 summer issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine, and I just love him. I, what I did was I took all of the letters out, you see here, and I just put Liberty across the top. And so I'll show you how that turned out. I'm almost done. Here is my progress. This has given me so much trouble, I cannot tell you. I mentioned in my last video that I, I missed like three stitches up here, which has just been a nightmare trying to fix it. And then I tried to use, um, I, I did some substitutions because I didn't have all of the colors. So the two browns were, in my last video, <laughs> excuse me, you couldn't see the stars because they weren't, they weren't different enough. So what I did was I pulled out my trusty etoile and those lighter brown, the lighter brown sections are done in the sparkly DMC etoile. And I just love it, it's so cute. So this is pretty much what it's gonna look like. This row is stitched in white and I just have to do white in the last three rows and then I'll be done. And I'm going to do this as a stand up uh, also. So I'm looking forward to getting that one done. I just love Barbara Anna. Nobody does it like Barbara Anna. Beautiful. Here's the brown etoile I used. And that is done on 36 count old parchment by Fabric Flare. There's not a whole lot of modeling in this. I, there's like one part right here you can probably see, but other than that, there's not a whole lot of modeling in this. And it's very thin. You can see my hand. So, that's that one. The next one uh, is part of our summer stocking sale, which is being hosted by myself and Michelle Hudson of Sacramento, California, my sweet friend. Um, we are both working on the Quaker stocking. I've shown this several times. This is a big mama too. And I will show you my progress. Of course, I'm doing this in purples rather than the called for colors. And this is done on 46 count weeks Confederate gray. And here's my progress. So my thinking was, I, I start at the top and I was thinking of using this color. This is 
the two main colors are these two purples. And then there's this color, which is a very light, <clears throat> excuse me, pinkish purple. And I was planning on using that for the flowers as well, but it's just a little bit too light. And so I was looking for another kind of purplish color to use on the flowers. And I ended up using mulled berries. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about that whole plant. And maybe you can tell me what your thoughts are. In the pattern, it uses gold. But it does not use green. It uses the blues or whatever the main color is. But I don't think I want to use purple for that. And I'm not sure if what's bothering me about it. Is it that it's too green? Maybe it should be a little golder green, something that's not quite so vibrant. I don't know. What do you guys think? <sighs> I'm really struggling with it. But whatever, whatever I settle on for the flowers, if not that, will be the same color that I use to stitch my initials. So it'll be just the flowers and my initials, the two initials. So let me know what you think. It sure is pretty though. I love the variegation in those purples. It's taking me a little bit longer than I thought. That's pretty, so pretty. Um, where are my threads? So the color that I'm using, this is the mold berries that I'm using for the flowers. And the one that's too light is Florida Lilac by Classic Color Works. Um, and then I'm using Weeks Dye, Work, Weeks Dye Works Iris and Classic Color Works Purple Aster for the two purples, which I love. I'm good with those. And I bought extra because it's going to be a while. So that's my stocking and it's still summer. So if you have a stocking you're working on, we would love to see it. Use the hashtag summer stocking Sal on Instagram. We would love to see what you're working on. Okay. The next one is also a cell that I was doing with, uh, Marie with stitches and diamonds. And this is seeking refuge. And I've been working on this one a lot too because seeking refuge and I am seeking refuge. So I've gotten quite a bit of this done. I'm uh, stitching it on 40 count fiber on a whim in the color brown sugar. And here it is. Here's my progress. So I stitched the animals. All I had in last time, I think, was this tree, maybe this bird. And so I started on the house. The house calls for 310, and I am using, sorry. I'm using Black Coffee by Classic Color Works because I wanted some variegation in there. And then the tree, I had to completely frog out because it was down like down here somewhere. I don't I counted off one of these berries and I think I counted off the wrong one. So I had to frog that whole thing out. So it's coming along. I'm happy to have the house started. I really want to get that house done. And then I'm also changing the lighter green to Bayberry uh, by Gentle Art. Bayberry. Oops. So enjoying that one too. And that's all my whips. Feels like a lot, but it's sure been a lifesaver. Um, moving on to haul. Uh, I, I saw a, something came up, you know how Etsy is. They love to kind of rope you into things that you didn't know you wanted. And I found a, something came up on a store called Scarlet Sky Designs TX, which is, I think they make cross stitch backers. And I found this one and I just loved it. So it's just a little paddle and it says 1776. 
So I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, some kind of patriotic is going to go on that for sure, but I'm not sure what yet. It's so cute. It's a little bit smaller than I expected it to be. I didn't really pay much attention, but it's really pretty. I love the finish. You can choose the different finishes that you want on it as well. And there are different ones. There's one with a, a B on it as well. It's beautiful. So, love that. Again, Scarlet Sky Designs TX. And then I got some patterns. So, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later, but my sister's best friend's name is Shayna, and they, uh, they're they both single moms, and they've been living together for the last six years out in the country on an acre of land with all seven of their children, and um, they're just, they were two peas, peas in a pod. They're, they were so close, and she took really good care of my sister when we weren't there, so... I found this and I, I know it's a marriage one, but it says to get and sew together they built a life they loved. So I'm gonna use this and I think I'll put like up here I'll put BFFs or something like that and then their initials and maybe the years that they were there. But I just thought that was so pretty. So I'm making this for Shayna. And I'm going to be using this beautiful, Shayna loves green, so I'm going to do this. I know it's bright, <laughs> not usually my kind of fabric. And then the words other than together, I'm going to do in purple because again, that was Dawn's favorite color. So I think that's going to be really pretty. So that was one. This is a free pattern that I got on Cherry Hill Stitchery and it's Freedom. So I grabbed that, that's so pretty. Probably we'll do that for next year. And then I found these cute little, they're called Petford Scissors. They're so cute. I'm not sure how I feel about them though because there's the holes are so big that it's hard to use them because there's so much play in there. Like nothing's happening. You have to like really, so maybe if I hold on to them like this, it's, I don't know. They're cute though. Cute. The next one is Abby Rose Designs, Merry Christmas. So pretty, I love the prim. Little House Needleworks, A Stitcher's Heart. I did a heart for a, a Smalls Exchange for StitchCon, and I love the way it turned out. So I thought, I'm going to get this one for myself. It's really pretty. This one has been on my wish list forever. And someone showed it on Floss Tube, and I was like, I need it. I need it. This is the American Sampler. How beautiful is that? Plum Street. They can do no wrong, Paulette. It's just amazing. Look at that. It's gorgeous. I don't know when I'll get to that. I'll have to, maybe after I finish one of my other big projects. So, I was watching Linen and Flax. I think it's Rachel. Is her name? I'm sorry. Uh, she was talking, it, this was probably a month ago if not more. She was talking about the first ladies uh, in history and the needlework that they did and she was saying that maybe sometime, I think she said September, October, she was going to do a series of floss tubes about them and she mentioned this book and I had to get it. It's amazing. Ladies First, Common Threads. And I have not been able to sit down and read through this, but some of the things that are in here are just beautiful. Here's Martha Washington's quilt. So it's all about the first ladies and the needlework that they did. Here's some other things that Martha did. So beautiful, and I just got this on Amazon. 
So I'm really looking forward to digging into this some more and and watching that series that she's going to do. I can't wait. That's right up my alley. Just love it. <clears throat> I joined Teresa Kogut's Patreon a while back and this month's charts came out and so I went ahead and printed them. This one is Green Cup Santa. It's so cute. 92 by 136 stitch count. This one is Right Jolly Old Elf. 134 by 132. She's amazing. This is the ornament, Mr. Claus ornament. I might do that one as one of those snow globes. Like, um, I bought the half plastic snow globes. So you stitch this and you put the snow globe over the top of it and you put some either glitter or some something that looks like snow and you make an ornament out of it. So I'm gonna try that. I have some other ones that I bought for that purpose too. So we'll see if I get around to them. Oh, I printed two of the green coat. Oops. This one I bought, this is an older one from May. Uh, and I didn't join until June. So I, I had to go, but you, as a Patreon member, you can go back and buy some of the old Patreon charts that, um, that have come out before. So I love this. I will probably just do the top, like from here up. I'll probably leave that on there, but I just love that Eagle. It's gorgeous. <sighs> Maybe a drum. I think it's so pretty. Teresa, she's amazing. And now that I finished Funky Abe, I decided I needed Funky George. So again, Miss Prim on Etsy. This is George. And I also got Funky RBG. I'm doing this one first. I love that. I think Jenny with Bougie Stitchers is working on this one too. And she made some changes I might copy. I, she said they're using like a purple in her hair. And she said she changed the hair color. I love that. I can't wait to get that one done. I'll do that as a stand up too. And then contrary to that one, we have Hussy. <laughs> I love her. Oh, that's so cute. So that one's Shameless Hussy. Excuse me. Get it right, Ange. Shameless Hussy. So that's going to be at the bottom of the Miss Prim priority list, but I love that one too. Um, and then just in the last few days, I many of you have seen that I have done this chart before and given the chart away, but I bought it again. It's called When Life is Done by Silver Creek Samplings, Samplers. And I'll let you read that because I don't think I can get through it. It's really beautiful. And I found it very comforting to stitch when I stitched it for my dad. And then I also found this one on Etsy, and so I printed it out too. So I'll be starting those soon. And then lastly, I was watching Linen and Scraps. They're amazing, I just love them. And they were talking about getting trims from a place called Purple Paper Mountain on Etsy, Purple Paper Mountain. And their trims are beautiful and very reasonably priced. So I might have gone a little crazy, but I do have a finishing business. So let's keep that in mind. 
um, just beautiful things. So many different, such a variety and just gorgeous. There's those and then smaller ones. So many, beautiful. So go check them out. So pretty. I'm excited to use some of those. That's gonna be fun. Okay, I made a list because I can't remember anything right now. Okay. Happy Mail. I have been dying to show you this Happy Mail. This is the mother of all Happy Mail. You're not going to believe this. I, I got an email from one of my viewers and she said, I have something you want. And I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't believe what she said. So I'm just going to show you what I got. And then we'll talk a little bit more about this angel. Okay. This is the box I got. And this has been sitting here for about three weeks now. And I didn't want to put it I didn't want to put it away before I showed you because you're not going to believe this. So my sweet friend wanted to remain anonymous, so I will respect that. But my dear sweet angel, you know who you are. This is the lovely card that she sent with it. So beautiful. And I'm just going to start going through these and keep in mind that some of these could be giveaways. Some of these likely will be 5,000 subscriber giveaways, giveaways because we're so close. Okay. So the first one is seasons, the spring seasons from Lila studio, Lila studio. This is a pattern but it's also all of the flaws. Overdyes and DMC, everything is here. Leela Studio, okay? We have a Q-snap. Who doesn't need a Q-snap? Quaker Handwork by Brenda Gervais. Is that right? Yeah. And the floss. That is so pretty. This one I love. Bluebird Garden. This is my artful offerings. Floss. These are beautiful. And some of these have been on my wish list too. It's like she stitches the same things I do. Speaking of which, The Rabbit and the Rose by Brenda Gervais. With the DMCs. Here's Season Summer by Leela Studio. Seasons Autumn. Really guys, can you believe this? I'm telling you this community. Seasons Winter. We have some 10 Count Even Weave Vintage Cloth by Lori Holt. And another one. We have Patchwork Seasons. This is a cross stitch by Fat Quarter Shop. Full kit with the silks. Silks. Oh, 
unbelievable. This is so, I, I, so generous. I just, <sighs> overwhelmed. Cross Stitch University's, um, this is one of their big, beginner patterns. This is great. If you have someone you're trying to teach to stitch, look at that. Okay, here we go. Not one, but two. How cute are these? And here's the other one. These boxes, you've probably seen these on Fat Quarter Shop. They're for schools. Well, they're really for anything, but I've been wanting to try these too. There's this one and this one. These are all brand new. All Everything's brand new. Needle minders. you guys I have no words I'm like speechless I I'm shocked floss drops these are by uh, it's Oema this is Christmas time classic color works thread pack Look at this project bag. And it comes with the little thread thread bed too. Project bag. And another project bag. And this is pieced. It's not a cheater panel. This is pieced in the background. With this beautiful little zipper pull. This is by Sherry So Sweet. Okay. This is by Shepherd's Bush. This is a pattern to stitch on one of the It's So Emma bags. The ones like this. Here's a big tote from It's Oema, Lori Holt, tote, a little design board, 7x7, seven seven. love these, okay, you ready, it's another project bag, I don't know who this one's by, okay, but it's also a kit. You may have seen this one. This is a Tisket a Tasket by Rosewood Manor. This has been on my list. It's so pretty and there's these patterns on the back as well. And everything. I think there's even two sets of the floss. So maybe I'll stitch it and then pass it on with the next one. There's a little hoop. A pair of scissors. She had this all kitted up. Some needles. Like, super kitted up. And even a little clippy for your fabric. I'm not done. 
not by a long shot. I want to make sure these all go back in the same thing. Oh, and look at the little zipper pull on this one. <laughs> These things are just beautiful. And another project bag. Again, on my list. This project bag has a little thread bed in it. Seasons of the Heart. and the flosses for each one. So before I, before I finish, um, this wonderful lady said to me, I've decided that I only want to stitch smalls now, that the bigger ones stress her out, which I get, totally get. But you know, she could have sold this stuff and made some money. She could have, she could have parceled it out to different people. And I just am blown away and so, so grateful. I was not expecting this. I, I, she mentioned one thing and it's what I'm about to show you. And that's what I thought I was getting. And when this came in the mail, as if that wasn't enough, I was blown away. Now, she also included something else, which has become very comforting to me in the last two weeks. And I'm going to show you these. They're so sweet, but these were included in the box as well. So, these are sitting next to my bed and I love them. Um, like the cherry on top, maybe even better. The thought behind it and the heart behind it. And she said she, I asked her to please let me pay her for these things and please let me pay for postage. And she said, I want this to be a gift given in love and I don't want it to be a burden. And I, you know, at the time we were hearing a lot in the news and things were, this was before, this is like three weeks ago before everything happened. And I was showing my mom this stuff and we were talking about how with everything that's going on in the world, it's so nice to know that someone like this is out there. And I just, <laughs> okay, so when she, when she emailed me and said, I have something you want, um, this is what she was talking about. Now, this is Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia. Most of you probably know all about this, but for those of you that don't, Mirabilia created this this chart, this pattern after 9-11 and it was a fundraiser and it went out of print. It doesn't say when it was printed, but it went out of print and you can only find these unless you're very, very lucky like me because wait till I'm about to show you after this is over. Um, these sell for $250 to $300 on eBay, just the chart. Okay, that's out of my price range. No, thank you. You know, I can't, I can't do that. So she could have made that on this. She could have done that easily. No problem, especially because it's fully kitted. We have the 30 count, we the people, fabric. We have all of the DMCs. Beads and Krennic. 
and even bead what bead thread. So I how do you thank someone? I thought, well, maybe I'll make her some bags, but she's giving me her bags. She doesn't want bags. How do I, how do I thank her? How do I, it's just fantastic. So my dear, sweet friend, you are loved and appreciated. And I'm so, so grateful. And more than anything else for your kind words. Thank you. You know who you are. Then I got another email from a gal who said, I have that pattern you've been looking for, that lady of the flag if you want it. And I said, that's so nice, but I actually already have it. But if you're looking to, you know, if you don't want it anymore, I would love to be able to have it and kind of loan it out to some other folks. If that's okay with you, then absolutely I would love to have it. And she sent it to me. Now I will say, I already have four people on the wait list. So it's not going to be anytime soon. Um, and by, oh, by the way, she sent me this lovely card and said, I put some other patterns in here also and a nice little note wishing me well. So this is Debbie. Debbie sent Mirabilia, Lady of the Flag. I have two of these babies in my hand. Ladies, you are incredible. This community is incredible. I will spend the rest of my floss tube career trying to be as generous as these people have been. Mark my words. I will never enter another giveaway on floss tube. I have riches beyond my dreams here. So thank you, ladies. Debbie also sent the auction by Told in a Garden. Farmer's Market by Told in a Garden. The quilting, oh, by Told in a Garden. This one is beautiful. This is by the Design Connection. It's called Sailboat Neighbors. Thank you. This one is by the Cricut Collection, Angels Unaware. I love this one. Crossed Wing Collection Winter Visitor. <laughs> so cute. And Cricut Collection. Oh, this one I'm going to have to stitch. From Sea to Shining Sea. The little sailboats with the American flag sails. So, happy mail, mothers of all random acts of kindness. I am so blessed, so blessed. You all, I just don't have words. So, um, ladies, thank you. That's all I can say, thank you. Uh, my plans. I'm going to work on the Remember Me for my sister, and I'm going to start the Together piece for Shayna. 
Um, but I also am having a lot of fun working on both Seeking Refuge and um, Let Freedom Ring. I also am doing a couple of sales. A couple of friends and I are working on um, August as of August 1st, we're going to do like a little sal for Abe's Parade. And you know I love Abe. Maybe this will go on that little paddle. He's so cute. This is by uh, finally a farm girl. Her patterns are just beautiful. So that's starting on August 1st. And then also on August 1st, myself and Michelle are going to be starting another new sal. And we would love to have you join us. This is going to be the Animal Cracker Sal. So for those of you who are not familiar, there are several of these. And I'll put some pictures up of some of the other ones. Um, Michelle's work, gonna work on the elephant. And I'm going to start with Scarlet. Now, you know I have to change that dress to purple. So I have all my colors picked out. And I'm going to stitch her on Blushing Llama. It's not a really good, eh, it's kind of close. This is 40 count and it's by wrinkledfabrics.com. And these will be stand-ups and the, these are so cute. So I'm gonna put um, the other ones on here. It doesn't say what the other ones are, but I'll put pictures up. And look at the back, they put a little um, scissor holder on there. So, hashtag Animal Cracker Sal, and this will be ongoing. I would love to have you join us. Um, show us your progress. Show us what you're working on. Show us your changes. We'd love to see it. So I hope you'll join us for that one, um, and we're going to start that on August 1st. So keep an eye out for that one. Oh, all the cells. I don't know how I'm going to keep track of them all. Okay, and lastly, before we get to the life update, hey, I have last time's giveaways for you. And uh, the first giveaway was Autumn Corner by Madame Chantilly. And the winner of this one is Kay Richard. Kay, congratulations, my friend. Um, I forgot to take a screenshot of this one, so my apologies, but the other three I have. The next one is Told in a Garden, oh, Amish Quilt Sampler by Told in a Garden. And the winner of this one is Linda Skinner. Congratulations, Linda. The next one is Summer Treats by Homespun Elegance. And the winner of this one is Carla Rigel, R-I-G-E-L. Congratulations. And lastly, we have there's No Magic Like Snow Magic by Rhonda Jean. And the winner is, it comes with buttons, the winner is Wendy Alls, A-H-L-E-S. So Wendy, congratulations. And if you all could send me an email, my email address is in the description box below. And tell me your name and if your YouTube name is not the same as your real name. Please um, provide me with your real name and your address and I will get those out to you right away. I have five more giveaways this time and uh, before I go into those, I just want to go over the rules a little bit and that is you must be 18 years old uh, so that I can ask you for your address. Um, I do ask that you are in the US because of postage costs right now, I'm sorry. Uh, also, please don't use any words that relate to a giveaway in any way. No win, no raffle, no um, freebie, anything like that. And I think that's it. Oh, and you'll have to answer a question. So the question I have for you is, what questions do you have for me? Because I could use a distraction right about now. I would love to know if you have any questions for me, if you have things um, that you would like to see made and sold on my website, if you have any types of 
bag themes that you would like to see or any types of bags or other organizers that you would like to see or just any questions about how I stitch, about the house, about anything at all. So let me hear from you. Let's um, give me some, some distractions. <laughs> I would appreciate it. Makes life a little bit easier to be able to focus on something else. So would love to hear from you. So our first First giveaway is All Dolled Up by Little House Needleworks. That's so cute. It says hen party. Hen party. Cute, that's number one. Number two is All Halloween Year Two October Crow House by Homestun, Homespun Elegance. Cute prim, I love that. Who does love a black house? You don't see that very often. Cute. That's number two. Number three is by Mill Hill and it's called On the Prairie Hearts and Buds. That's so cute. It's so dainty. Feminine looking. I like that. So that's number three. Number four. I, this is one of my favorite poems that I've seen this for years and years and years, and I just love it. It's called 100 Years by Lizzie Kate. And it says, 100 years from now, it will not matter what kind of car I drove, what kind of house I lived in, how much I had in my bank account, nor what my clothes looked like. But the world may be a better place because I was important in the life of a child. I just love that. It's so beautiful. Every mother should have that hanging on their wall to remind them. Or father. So that's number four. And the last one, I mentioned in my last video that I had purchased the, the new DMC card that has the actual floss um, swatches in it. So I would like to give away my printed version. So this is this is the whole DMC collection. It samples of the colors. It's a printed one. It's not the one with the floss, but I thought I would pass this on. And it's slightly used, but gently. Has a couple little creases, but not bad. So that is number five, I believe, right? Yes, that's number five. So answer the question in the comments and uh, leave the number that you're interested in and hopefully you'll win. Good luck. Okay, um, I'm going to go into uh, my personal update. So if that's not something you wanna hear about, I will see you next time. And uh, please bear with me and I hope you come back. And if you enjoyed what you saw, I would love it if you'd give me a thumbs up and subscribe. We're very close to 5,000 and we've got some incredible giveaways for the 5,000 subscriber giveaway. So if, uh, if you don't mind, I would love it if you would subscribe. And if you would like to hear my personal update, um, hang in. Okay. So, um, I'm going to share with you what happened because I hope that it's going to do somebody some good. I hope that somebody can learn something from it. And I don't know what I, I don't know what any of this has taught me and I'm, it's gotta be something, right? So I'm going to back up a little bit because some things led up to this, but first I want to mention again, Shana is Dawn's best friend and they have been living together for probably closer to seven years, raising their seven children together in a beautiful, crazy blended family. Shana has been the one that's been there with Dawn, rushing her to the hospital, you know, making sure she's okay, waking her up at night when she doesn't think she's breathing right, those kinds of things for all that time. So Shane is a part of the family. I call her my bonus sister. And I just wanted to tell you that because she's part of the story. So 
after my last floss tube, I reached out to my congressman's office because I, I work with some of his staffers in my job. And so I knew I had somewhat of a connection and might be able to get at least some information, if nothing else. They told me that they have no um, oversight over medical issues of any kind. There's nothing they can do. So then a couple days after that, I filed a complaint with the California State Insurance Commissioner's office. And I didn't hear back from her from, for a couple of days. On Wednesday, I don't remember the date. On Wednesday, my sister had an asthma attack and it was not as bad as the previous ones. And so Shana took her to the hospital. Excuse me. Now, the hospital that she went to was not a Kaiser hospital. She went back to that same one that she'd been at before. Where they had actually, you know, given her some, some good information. That hospital kept her overnight. And they discharged her um, in the late morning on Thursday. She went home and she was feeling, she was feeling okay. She went, took a nap. You know, they had her on prednisone, which is the answer they always, that's all they do is they put her on prednisone and send her home. She seemed to be fine. She was, you know, doing normal stuff, walking around and everything was fine. About, I would say it was about nine o'clock at night. She was in a room with Shana and she, Shana was sleeping and she, my sister had her nebulizer, which is the treatment that they give themselves when they have a bad asthma attack. So Shana had been sleeping and Dawn woke her up and said, we have to go, meaning we have to go to the hospital. By the time Shana jumped up and went over to her, my sister was starting to panic because she couldn't get any air. Shana was on the phone with 911. When my sister panics, she pulls the nebulizer away because she's just panicking. So Shana's holding the nebulizer on her face and talking to 911, and my sister just goes limp. Um, the 911 dispatcher talked Shana through CPR. And Shana did CPR while the EMTs were on their way. When the EMTs got there, she still was not breathing. And they worked on her for over an hour to bring her back. All this time, at their home, all seven kids were there and witnessed it. Once the paramedics got there and Shana was no longer doing CPR, she called my mom and my son was also staying at my mom's house at the time. So my mom and my son went to the house and I called, or they called me, and all I could hear was my mom in the background screaming at her, Dawn, come back. Come back, Dawn. So, I was still, I was driving. I live a little bit farther away than they do from Dawn, so I wasn't able to get there as quickly. And just as I was about to get off the freeway to go down their street, my mom said they got her heart started and they're taking her to another hospital. This is another hospital we haven't been at yet. She, the nurse told me later that her heart had stopped twice. The first time for eight minutes, 
and the second time for 30. When the brain is deprived of oxygen for that long, it's not something that can be repaired. I am still in complete and utter disbelief that she's not coming back. She's 43 years old and funny. She's so funny. She's the best mom you've ever met. She's, she walks that fine line that we all try to get to between best friend and mom and does it with grace and so much strength. And she's vibrant. She's, I just, anyway, I can't believe it. So the, what the nurse told us was that asthmatics, when they, asthmatics are, it's easier for them to take breath in than it is for them to release breath. So all the time they're working on her, her lungs are filling and filling and filling with air. And this causes a compression of the heart, which is what caused the cardiac arrest, and it, which is why she wasn't, they weren't able to restart her heart. So she was, she was in a coma for four days. And there are processes that they go through where they try to cool down the body to allow the brain to swelling to be reduced and then they bring the body back up to temperature and then as they're doing this they're doing all of these neurological tests and we my mom and I I, I won't go into it but there you know somebody has to tell the kids and somebody had to tell Shana she didn't know she was at home taking care of the kids I mean, she knew what was happening, but we didn't tell her how dire we thought it was. Um, and then on the last day, they did some neurological tests and they did them in front of us so that we could see that there was no reaction. And, you know, you have to make that decision and it's just the worst the worst feeling that you'll ever have and I do want to um, express my gratitude to those medical professionals who are empathetic and sympathetic and sensitive and kind when we have had none of that she my mother was allowed to hold her when she took her last breath because she wanted to be the first one and the last one to hold her and they didn't have to do that Um, there's a long road ahead for us. The kids have, the kids' father, we have a long road ahead of us. And, um, I'm angry. I'm very angry. I'm angry. At Kaiser I'm angry at the hospital for letting her leave the same day earlier that same day they let her out of the hospital and I'm angry at myself because I I could have done more So,
we have a long road, but like I said earlier, I don't want this to be a depressing place and I don't want this to be all about me. So thank you for listening. Um, there may be some changes happening in my life because there's no way in hell I'm going to let those kids suffer any more than they have to. I refuse. And I already let my sister down once. So I'm not going to let her down again. But I'll be here. Because I need you. I need this in my life to keep me sane. <laughs> so... I apologize for all of this and I wish it wasn't this way and I wish I almost wish I'd never mentioned it in the first place because I feel like I'm burdening you with these things but at the same time I'm beyond grateful for every single thing every kind word every thought and prayer for my family and keep them coming because I'm gonna need them so with all that said hug your family please tell them that you love them there's I saw a post well actually a family member of mine when I was talking to him on the phone the other day he said I want to start a hashtag he said, I want everybody to call their loved one and leave a message on their phone telling them how much they love them so that that person can save it in case anything ever happens. They'll always have that. And I think that's awesome. So do that. Call and leave a message for your kids and tell them how much you love them. Even if they don't save it. Just let them hear it. Tell them. Call your parents. Call your siblings. Call your friends. Never let a day go by without telling them. So my friends, I have a little um, slideshow video thing that my daughter put together for me that I'm going to include at the end here. And she was spectacular. She was everything I always wanted to be. She's up there with my daddy now and my family of four is now down to two. <laughs> but that's okay. We've got a bunch of kiddos to take care of and these kids are <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic kiddos. And it will be the joy of my life to help them grow into amazing human beings, whatever that role is. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. I'm sorry. Um, love you from the bottom of my heart. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being there, being who you are, being an incredible community. And hopefully I'll see you in two weeks. And it won't be no tears. Well, I can't promise that, but probably no tears. Bless you all. Thank you. I love you all. Have a great night.
thankful for this one for saving my life. <laughs> I'm thankful for my friends and my amazing sister and mom who have always had my back no matter what. And my niece and nephew of my first babies. <laughs> I'm thankful for all of you and all the joy that you bring me.